Welcome back, everyone. Right now, Arkansas U.S. Congressman Tim Griffin joins us in the Daybreak Studios. And all morning, you've been sending us your questions to ask him from topics ranging from Libya to the national uh, debt here in our country. So we want to welcome him live now. Good to see you. you. Good thanks, to be here. Thanks for coming back. Thank how you. have these first few months gone? They've been a whirlwind. It's incredible how uh, fast the days uh, go. And my kids are so young, uh, you know, when I come back, sometimes, particularly with my little boy, I can, you know, they're at that age where you can see a difference after a week. Sure. So that, that's the tough part. Yeah. But uh, it's good to be home this week. I would imagine so. Well, there's a lot going on in the world yeah. from Japan to uh, everything that we are dealing with, the coalition forces are dealing with in Libya. Um, and so I, I wanted to start with that. Many lawmakers are calling for more congressional involvement in sure. decisions um, in Libya because President Obama has, seems to have sort of taken this on himself. So I was just wondering what your thoughts on that. Do you think sure. Congress should be able to vote on this and do you think that President Obama needs to address the nation? Sure. Well, certainly Congress has an important role to play here and part of the process, um, hopefully it's going to be the process with this president, but with, with past presidents is to keep uh, the Congress in the loop on these things and ultimately under the War Powers Act, uh, Congress will, will have to authorize the use of force. Uh, and so I, I am hoping that the president uh, understands that there must be an ongoing dialogue explaining not only to us in the Congress but to the American people why we're there, what we're doing there, and how long we intend to be there and just sort of continuing to communicate our goals because uh, uh, that's uh, that's really the role of the President and Congress isn't just uh, a bystander. We need to play a role here. Right. Um, one of our Facebook questions this morning has to do with Libya. Uh, David Wright wants to know Libya only holds 2% of the world's oil supply. So why is this affecting gas prices in the U.S.? That's what we're hearing in news reports. That, you know, because of the unrest in Libya, oil prices sure. going up. What is the connection there? I think it has to do with the broader uncertainty in the region. Uh, and um, it, it is, Libya may in and of itself not control most of the oil, but that region is, is the region uh, that controls, controls the oil. And this represents instability to the markets. And I think that's probably what we're seeing. Many of our uh, viewers also on Facebook this morning, they've been saying, why, don't we, why do we always have to stick our noses in everyone's business? Sure. We have many problems going on here in this country, and you know our debt is one of them. Sure. So I know that's something you wanted to touch on as well. Well, the, the thing I'd like to talk about, uh, particularly with the debt, is uh, if we are going to be the country that we grew up in, the, the country that innovates, the country that is responsible for many technological advances and creates jobs as a result, we've got to deal with this debt. Uh, we, can, we can do everything else right, and if we don't deal with the debt, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be, have a difficult time creating jobs, and we won't be the country uh, with the standard of living that we're accustomed to. And a lot of folks think that you can, you can just get rid of waste or foreign aid or earmarks, and then the, the debt disappears. Those are important things to deal with, but those are just a small percentage of the spending. We have to deal with Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. We need to make sure the people who have been promised like the seniors need to make sure they get what they were promised but for future generations people my age for social security for example we've got to reform it we've got to change it or it's not going to be there it simply goes away if, if we don't do something. Right. Um, let's talk about uh, the health care law. One sure. year ago this week, it was um, signed into law. It was controversial then. It seems to still remain controversial. Sure. There have been polls that say 48% uh, of Americans disagree with it. You can talk about where we are with, with that. Um, some people calling for a repeal. What do you sure, think about sure. it? Sure, sure. Well, it was a big part of what I talked about last year. And uh, I voted to repeal the health care law. And, but I don't, I don't believe we just repeal it and that's it. I believe we repeal it, we defund it, and get rid of the one we have, and we start over. I believe absolutely positively we need health care reform, no doubt about it. But we don't need the one we've got. We need one that, uh, that relies on more market competition, that enacts things like tort reform, uh, to cut down on frivolous lawsuits, and, um, and one that looks for ways to innovate. Uh, the one we got spends a lot of money that we don't have and relies heavily on the government. 
and I think ultimately we have got to we've got to get rid of the one we've got but replace it with something else we do need reform I just don't believe we need the reform that we got. Okay, we'll see what happens. And so many middle class families are Kansans watching the program this morning, seeing gas prices yep. soar. They're really having to watch their pocketbooks these days. Sure. And, it, it, you know, times are difficult for some people who, who don't even have jobs. What can you tell people this morning about what's being done on Capitol Hill to give us some sort of uh, promise as sure. to what the future holds economically? Sure. Well, there are a lot of people uh, who want to invest in this country people that will create jobs if given the opportunity and a lot, of, a lot of them have been sitting on the sidelines because of there's so much uncertainty I think a lot of that deals with our debt and they're looking to see whether Congress and the government uh, is going to act whether we're going to act like adults and get this spending under control I believe that the first step to job creation is getting our government spending under control to give confidence to the markets, to the bond market, to the stock market, that we're going to do the right thing on spending. And then people will have more confidence investing in this country, and then we get the jobs uh, that, that, we'll, that we're waiting on. And I think we just, we just got to have an economy that is more friendly to job creators like Caterpillar, like HP companies like this that provide jobs and uh, we just got to we've got to be the country where people want to go do business where people want to create jobs we've got to we've got such a burdensome regulatory system that we're we're chasing a lot of jobs away and so we've got to we've got to change that and, uh, and I believe we can change it and stay on top. Okay, well, you've done a great job of, of keeping everybody informed with your town hall style meetings. Thank we you. appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, we'll you. be staying in touch. Thank you. All right. Well, stay with us coming up after the break. Barry has a look at your full four.